time for another midweek minute, so let's get it. Back in early 1939, a man by the name of Robert L. May was commissioned by his boss there at Montgomery Ward to write a cheery Christmas story for all of the holiday shoppers and feature an animal as its star. 1939 was also a rough year in this man's life because he lost his wife to cancer, but he continued on and he finished the assignment just in time for Christmas. And he presented a poem booklet to his bosses and 2.4 million copies of this poem booklet was distributed. The animal that he chose to feature was a reindeer. And when asked why reindeer, he said, well, my daughters loved reindeers and he named the star of the story the reindeer, he named him Rudolph. Why Rudolph? I guess it was a cool name back, back then. 10 years later, May's brother-in-law, a guy by the name of Johnny Marks, he takes the poem and he, he makes a song out of it. And Christmas week of 1949, that song went to number one on the Billboard chart. And we know the story very well, Rudolph the song, Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. And if you know the song, then you know Rudolph's story, which was based in part on May's childhood story. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph with your nose so bright, why don't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you will go down in history. And that's it. That is the story. My man Rudolph saved Christmas. He is a hero. What started off as a liability, that red nose, actually turned into an asset in his life. Now I guess, you know, it's a good story. It's a good story and it's also a good song. I guess that, that we can say, in some senses of the word, we're kind of like Rudolph. We don't start off well. We're far from God, we don't know God, we're, we're not mindful of God, we, we're distant. But something happens, the gospel comes to us and it changes us. And then we find out that we were more sinful and flawed than we ever dared to believe, but through the gospel, through Christ, we are more accepted and loved than we ever dared to hope. And so how do we respond to such a great salvation that has come to us? Well, we respond by singing praises to our God for his great salvation. We sing our, our story and we sing praises to God and we join with the saints of old in scripture. We think of Mary when she found out she was pregnant with the, with the Christ child with the Savior of the world, what does she say? My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. We join with Zechariah. He comes out of the temple, his tongue has been loose, and he says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people. We join with the angels as they serenade the shepherds. Glory to God on earth peace among whom with whom with whom he is pleased. Glory to God. And why do we sing these songs? Because our God is the hero of the story. He is the savior of our souls. And he has done great things for us. He has rescued us. He has redeemed us. He has given us joy. He has given us love. He has granted us hope. And he has given to us peace. And these songs will endure because they point to the one who was and is and is to come, the Savior of our souls. And so this Christmas season, as we adore that baby in the manger. Let us praise him by singing songs of our salvation because he is worthy of our praise. Merry Christmas. <laughs>